James Connolly uh, represents a different political tradition to the romantic nationalism of Pierce and McDonough and Plunkett, and also to the, the Fenianism of McDermott and Clark. I mean, Connolly stands for, for socialism, and he brings a sort of socialist, working class, internationalist politics into the military council. So he's quite distinct in many ways. And he also, of course, brings his own force, the Irish Citizen Army, into the revolutionary movement in 1916. Connolly was born in Cowgate, which is a very poor kind of Irish emigrant um, neighbourhood um, in Edinburgh. And he has a kind of a, 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 a background which is much more influenced by, by Scottish social and political influences um, in his early um, lifetime. He serves in the British Army. Um, the details remain sketchy, but he, he almost certainly served in the British Army in Ireland and also in India, although it's not something that he particularly talked about. Um, after he comes back from the army, he becomes immersed in Scottish socialist circles, um, um, I, uh, particularly in trade union and socialist um, uh, politics. Um, almost by chance, he, get, he comes to Ireland as a socialist organiser, um, but he quickly becomes uh, drawn to not just um, radical socialism in Ireland, but also to, to, to republicanism. Um, so by, by coming from Scotland, in a sense, he brings British socialism politics with him. But in Ireland, he, he, he very much becomes susceptible to the sort of the, the physical force republicanism um, that, that he wouldn't have been familiar with um, in Scotland. He becomes an organiser for the Irish Socialist Republican um, uh, Party. Um, and by this time, we can say that Connolly is now a Republican as well as a Socialist. And that's really his, his distinctiveness that he brings together these, he, he, he fuses together these two different ideological strands. Now, the IS, ISRP isn't a success, and he spends some time in America um, afterwards, again, as a trade union organiser and as a sort of a socialist um, activist. Uh, but he returns to Ireland in 1910. And he becomes very much associated with, with, with Jim Larkin, and he's involved in the, the, the lockout and other strikes in this uh, period. Um, the, the, the failure of the lockout um, seems to have had a big influence on his, his, his politics. And I suppose like a lot of socialists, he would have had a very optimistic reading of the possibilities in the early 20th century. He would have felt that history was on the side of the working class. Um, by 1914, particularly with the outbreak of the First World War, you see a sort of a, a greater sense of frustration and disappointment. Um, and of course, Connolly personally would have been disillusioned by the fact that the working classes in the different countries in Europe had rallied around to conservative, nationalist, jingoistic or militarist causes. And so one thing which, which brings Connolly closer to people like the uh, IRB and the Irish Volunteers, who he would have been very critical with before, is this sense that you know, things are going the wrong way. Something must be done to, to, to bring about um, a revolutionary moment. So like them, there's a sense, uh, not that history are on the side, but rather a sense of frustration and pessimism that something, something um, must be done. So Connolly, who had before been really quite critical of um, Fenianism um, and middle-class nationalism, begins to see that perhaps by coming together, uh, it, it may, uh, lead to the best possibility of revolution. Um, so quite quite late in the day, then James Connolly, um, in, in in circumstances that are a little bit murky, uh, um, joins the military council, and that really com completes the uh, what the, the 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 third of the, the three ideological strands which come together: the, the socialism joining the uh, republicanism and, and, and culture nationalism, and of course. Connolly also brings with him the Citizen Army. Um, the Citizen Army had been formed in the wake of the, the lockout, and while they were a very small force, n no more than several hundred uh, men and a smaller number of women, uh, they were much more committed than the Irish Volunteers to, to revolution, and they would play quite a significant role um, in Dublin when the Rising comes about in 1916.